Columbus Day really had nothing to do with Columbus and it had everything to do with the 11 lynched Italians. I'm surprised that for so long the true history of why we have Columbus Day in America has been omitted from the history books and from the discussion. The true story of Columbus Day has almost nothing to do with Christopher Columbus. In fact, it's not the Columbus Day we learned about in school. The origins of Columbus Day have to do with the largest mob lynching in United States history that took place in Louisiana in 1891. My name is Danielle Romero and I'm so glad you're here with me today on my channel where I dig into hidden history and American identity and what the process looks like of becoming an American for so many different groups. Our story starts not with Columbus setting sail, but in New Orleans, Louisiana, 1891. Picture this, 11 Italians and Italian Americans have just been pulled out of prison after being acquitted of a murder and lynched publicly. Anyway, their lives snuffed out by a mob of vigilante justice. And this shock reverberates throughout the Italian American community all the way to the old country. Well, why did this happen? Well, I did a whole video talking about this history that I'll link to at the end. But unfortunately, the answer to why was a dark reflection of the times. These men were killed simply because they were Italian. They were considered at the time racially inferior to Southern whites, and they were ostracized and marginalized. And this isn't a pleasant chapter of American history, but it's crucial to remember this. President Benjamin Harrison, who was the president of the United States at the time, spots an opportunity amidst this crisis. Italy is upset about what's going on. Some of the men who were hanged were still Italian nationals. So now this becomes an event that's much larger than just the United States South. And in a bid to ease tensions and maybe change the narrative for Italian Americans, President Harrison officially proclaims a Columbus Day celebration in 1892. But this isn't something that he plans on doing every year. It ends up turning into kind of a week-long celebration. It's not just a holiday, though. This is a political act. This is an attempt to prevent a conflict with Italy and kind of smooth over what happened. And so in 1892, this is the first time we have a Columbus Day celebration in New York City. It's a week-long event. It's kind of a big deal for the Italian Americans at this time because they're now being suddenly folded into this greater narrative of, of white America. And so a holiday is born out of political necessity. Um, it ends up becoming a yearly holiday, but not till 1937 uh, when President Franklin D. Roosevelt kind of put that into action. So when we're talking about celebrating Columbus Day, sometimes you know people will Google like, what are the origins of Columbus Day? And Google will tell them, well, it became a federal holiday in 1937 and completely omits the, the bloody, messy, violent history and reason why it was even put on, <laughs> put on the calendar in the first place. So fast forward to present, and now Columbus Day is not just an Italian-American story. It has become a battleground for another marginalized community, the indigenous peoples of North America. And movements arise advocating for the replacement of Columbus Day with Indigenous Peoples Day, and a lot of places have kind of made that switch. But it's not a simple name swap, because I think we do need to acknowledge that history has many narrators. And for too long, one story will drown out another, and then it switches, and, and it, we, we're, it's, we're somehow not able to hear um, concurrent histories at the same time. This might feel like a punch in the gut for the Italian-American community, who feel like this erases a part of their history and their story, even though it's, it's not very well known to many others why they have a Columbus Day in the first place. You know, this is a part of their identity, becoming Americans was this holiday, not so much because it's Columbus, but because of why they got it. You know, this is a messy emotional debate that doesn't have a clear cut answer, but I think even to get into the debate, we need to have all of the facts of this history. And I really am surprised that for so long, the true 
history of why we have Columbus Day in America has been omitted from the history books and from the discussion. The very creation of Columbus Day was a political act, and it was an attempt to help pretend that there was an integration of Italians in the American community. You know, so what do we do with Columbus Day? Well, this isn't a multiple choice question with only one circle that you fill in. I think this is an open invitation to explore some of the multifaceted stories that define us as Americans. And in conversations about Columbus Day and Indigenous Peoples Day, because I, I think that Indigenous Peoples Day, uh, there's a lot of merit. There's a lot of merit behind that movement. Um, but I think it's easy to jump to conclusions, to polarize this debate into a stark contrast between these two holidays and these two identities. And the intention for me, at least, is not to argue that Columbus Day should stay as it is without question. And for them, Columbus Day wasn't a celebration necessarily of Columbus, but an affirmation of their place in America during a time when they were heavily discriminated against. And I have lots of other videos on my channel where I have shared many other lynchings of Southern Italians and Italian immigrants here in the United States during the 18 and 1900s. This was not an isolated issue. I don't think there's a clear cut argument here for either like preserving Columbus Day in, in some shape or form or replacing it. But I think before we take the ax to Columbus Day, we do need to understand that's full historical weight for all the communities involved. I think in advocating for, for one community, I don't think that means we erase the experiences of another community. And I think if there's anything in America's diverse tapestry that we can learn from is that our histories are really, they're intertwined in so many ways and in complicated ways. And to start unraveling one thread without understanding its connection to the whole picture, it risks weakening the whole fabric when we pull on it. And so, you know, I, I do, I know that this is um, an emotionally charged topic and, and it, hap it comes up every year. Maybe the name gets changed. And, you know, removing Columbus Day off the calendar, it's really not, it's not a referendum just on Christopher Columbus and how we may feel about him now, but it's important to understand why that holiday actually came about in the first place. If you like this video, you would definitely like to watch some of the other videos I've done on the Italian American experience or the process of becoming American. Single out the Italians as the most significant threat to the South. He implored, quote, for God's sake, send your Italians to the coal mines of Pennsylvania or some other hot place. He perceived the South as a bastion of pure Americanism, viewing it as, quote, the most thoroughly American because it was the most thoroughly Anglo-Saxon. Could immigrant groups such as Southern Italians be classified as colored under Mississippi law? Gaglione was lured from his house under pretense of receiving a message from New Orleans, was seized, threatened with death, and savagely beaten. The local press abstained from publishing the explicit details of his abuse, hinting, though, at its extreme brutality. 